standing is permanent. The state fluctuates. When you become a child of God, you put in a permanent state. But your state is fluctuating because it depends on how you walk with God. Let's see if I get a cool example. Everybody in here is born into a family. Am I right about it? Mm -hmm. Now, if you were born, hypothetically, if you were born to the Evans family, amen. JJ, what else? Still? Still easy. You were born into the Evans family. <laughs> That's your standing. <laughs> you can't change the fact you were born into that family. <laughs> Hello, somebody. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Your name is on some, some, some paperwork somewhere. <laughs> That's your state. But your state may fluctuate. You may do some things that the evidence don't like. You may, you, you may do some things that you don't like. But that's fluctuating. That's what your state is. So your soul, when people say, well, if we're saved, then how can I not be saved? The way you're not saved is based on your state, which can change. Because what you do from the point that God puts you in the right standing mm -hmm. is dependent on what you look like when you die. Mm -hmm. But your standing is the same. That's why a person um, can leave home act crazy. <laughs> Amen. Spend up all his father's money. And when he comes home, his father says, now let's kill the fatty cat. His son says, make me as one of your high servants. His father says, no, you, your son. Your sonship doesn't change because you went out here. Now, if you had stayed out there and if you had died out there, That's it. then your state would be permanent. Mm -hmm. But as far as your standing is concerned, it stays permanent. I, I know that's kind of deep. So, you know, Sunday afternoon, I don't want to give a little brain on cruise control. But does everybody understand what I'm going with? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Is there any questions? Raise them. Because I, I know that's, that's, trust me, it was hard for me to understand. So I know it's sort of difficult. It's kind of tricky. Anybody have any questions pertaining to this? Any questions at all? You know uh, what yes. you're going to say, Brad. Uh, what else are your standing? You is, is based upon what you do, but your state will always be the same. Well, opposite, opposite. Mm -hmm. I'm that right. Mm -hmm. Standing is permanent. Okay. What your state is, Perfect. think of it as your status. Okay. Okay. Um, sometimes you go to the doctor, the doctor can say you have a positive status. Sometimes you say you got a negative status, right? Okay. Status can change. Mm -hmm. State can change. But you are you, regardless. That's why you take you put your name on the little cup and you go to the bathroom. Hey, that, 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 that. <laughs> <laughs> you give a sample, that's you. That stays the same. Whatever happens with that sample. Oh, it's good today. Oh, it's not so good today. That's that's the state. Okay. Think of that. Yes. Well, how does repentance uh, come into that? How does it make you stabilize in the, the first one? Great question. How does repentance uh, stabilize you? Right. The Bible talks about in the book of 1 John that while we are in a state where we can sin, where we can do things, where God gives us the freedom to do things, the Lord says, but if we walk. Worthy. The walk is, is the thing that makes us stable in this sense. Or rather in this sense. Because even though today I messed up, Tomorrow I mess up. My standing is still I can call back to my father and ask for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. That doesn't change. A person, believe it or not, I know people don't like to think of it like this, and that's why we preach such hard work passages. A person can leave the church that was baptized in the 70s and come back in 2020. And guess what? You know, people say, well, let's get re let's let's rebaptized. Let's restored. Let's restored. Let's re not mm -hmm. His standing hasn't changed. Amen. He just repented. He 
he's changing his mind about what he, but his standing is fine. You know, I don't have a problem with people that rebaptize. I don't have a problem with them. I'm just saying, as far as how God sees them. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Again, we're going to get into some good teaching, especially next year. We're going to get into some real good theological teaching. So I want you guys to hang in there with me. Um, standing never varies. State is fluctuating. It depends on the measure in which I walk with God. My standing is always perfect because it is measured by Christ's acceptance. I am accepted in him. As he is, so are we in this world. 1 John chapter 4, verse 17. But my state will be good or bad as I walk in the spirit or walk after the flesh. Romans chapter 8, verse number 5. Yes. And, and when you don't realize that your, your standing is the same, that's how the devil can beat you up. Because yes. you always, you know, hard on yourself. You feel like you're, you're just in limbo. Yes. And, and, and that's, your faith is shaken. Mm -hmm. you, don't, you don't believe what God has told you. That's the point. Absolutely. That's why I'm trying to get us to that point in this church. And no other congregation teaches this. I'm trying to get us to this point because it's my responsibility. Mm -hmm. Is to let you know what God says is for you. Mm -hmm. Don't run away from verses like Ephesians 2, 8, 9. I do. I promise you I do. People just bring that up. No, that ain't right. It's, 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 it's uh, Mark 16, 16. <laughs> he never believed and is baptized. Ain't the grace? Get out of your head. And I just now he's arresting the folks. And I just read that passage. They, oh, no, you ain't looking at the whole, the whole thing. All of it's God's word. That's right. Mm -hmm. I don't have to make Ephesians 2 8 9 rest of Mark 16 16. Mm -hmm. It all is cohesive. Yeah. Coalescence. Why? Because all of it's true. It's just in various aspects. Mm -hmm. If you look at it from this side, it looks different. If you look at it from that side, that's God's side. If you look at it from this side, that's my side. But it's still a cube. You see what I'm saying? All of it's the cube of salvation. It just depends on what side of the cube you're on. Anybody had a room with the cube in the middle? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, oh, the cube. Yeah. I can never. Oh, I can saw that thing, but I take it apart and put the colors back <laughs> in. <laughs> I, I did it now! You know? I, I don't know a handful of people that can do that thing and you can get it all sizes. But that's how God looks at our salvation. It's aspectual. This is his aspect. So when he talks about this, he's already done it. When you see it in real time, you haven't done it yet. But it's all the same salvation. It just looks different depending on where you look at it from. All right. Let me hasten on. The term, go back to uh, verse number two. The term also, through whom also sets the blessing forth as distinct and additional to that of the peace with God. Through Christ, in whom they have believed, there has been given to the justified access into the wonderful standing in divine favor. In other words, when he says also, he's not just saying you're justified, but there's something else. I love watching these commercials where they tell you uh, Super Bowl is going to do this and it does that and it does that. It does that, that. And you can write to the last five, ten seconds of that commercial, what do they say? If they call now, <laughs> we'll also include Mm -hmm. Anybody see those <laughs> That's how God looks at it. He says, not only are you justified, but you also get access. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. That's why I tell a child of God, for us to go to hell, we've got to really want to go to hell. Amen. God has put these so many traps, He put so many catch alls around us. You pray, ask for forgiveness. You live faithfully, I take care of you. You do this, you do that. And, and, and all we got to do is try to live right. Mm -hmm. Do our best. Mm -hmm. We don't have to be perfect. Mm -hmm. But we strive for perfection. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Who knew my one in seven pounds mm -hmm. just be the seven and one same thing? <laughs> How <laughs> many? <laughs> Hello. So, baby, you okay with that? No. I'm going to pray for you. <laughs> <laughs> We two and seven. How about that? You know, I remember that. I don't know if it's a lesson, but I was just saying with the uh, free will. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Gives in that way.
flexing. Free will well, flexing. Well, not people when you choose to think. Mm -hmm. You make a choice to mm -hmm. do good or to do to do bad. To do good. Do I have to do We have a we have a choice. saying is, we don't want to 
take what God has given us graciously and a no because we have that right. It's like our sister just said, the free will. God is not going to give you the grace and then say, well, uh, you're going to stay there permanent. No, we can frustrate the grace of God. That word frustrate means to make it ineffective. So that was the point I was really trying to drive from. I wrote down the wrong passage, apparently. I put down Galatians 2 1. But I'll find a way to get back to you later. You can frustrate the grace of God. You can choose not to let God transform you. You can decide not to let God do what he wants to do through you. All right? That's something to keep in mind. That's why once saved, always saved is not true. But our standing and our state, those are true statements. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, let's, let's hasten on. Yes, sir. It's uh, Galatians 2.21. 2.21. I forgot the other two. All right. <laughs> Go ahead, read it. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness comes by the law, then it is righteousness. All right. Now, the point is, he's, he's arguing against the law. He's talking about the law versus grace. But the point I want to show you is that you can make the grace in effect. That's the main point I was driving at. Okay? All right. Now, let's, let's say so. Uh, let, me, let me go on for just the sake of uh, time here. Verse 3. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation. Everybody have that? Yes. He says we glory in tribulation. Anybody know what tribulation means? Trouble. 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 It's a good word. Amen. But here's, here's, a, here's the Greek term. I want you to write this down. The Greek term is a word called polypsis. 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 Tribulation. Why is that important? Polypsis means to squeeze or to press together. The idea is a grape bag where you put grapes in and you step on. Or it, it, the idea that it becomes an emotional strain. That's what tribulation means. It means I'm going through some things. Anybody going through some things? I just feel like this <laughs> chest start getting tight. <laughs> Mind start wondering. You know, you just start with God in the picture anywhere. And you know, you just have a friend to call. You don't feel like dealing with people. You just, you, just, you know, that's the lips. That's tribulation, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Now, the lipsis carries the idea of a great emotional spiritual stress that can be caused by external or internal uh, pressure. The word tribulation is preceded by an article, which means the tribulation. He's talking about something specific. It can refer to things like physical pressure. Uh, but he says, knowing that tribulation does what? Bring back it completely stress. brings out something in us. The word brings out there is a word called categorizema. Uh, it literally means to, to work to a, a purpose or to get to an accomplished end. God sends tribulation not to hurt us, but to make us. Perfect. When you think about tribulation, don't think about it in a negative sense. Think about it in the sense that it makes who you are who you are. As a child of God, the more tribulation you go through, the stronger you get. And it brings out the God in do you see that? I used to, I'm telling you, I, I, I've taken a new mindset. A few years ago, go through tribulation, I'm asking God, why me? <laughs> but that's, yeah, that's, that's the new mindset. God, why not? And here's what he says. He's going to talk about this a little bit later. He says, well, be happy. And not happy, but be joyful. Happy means it's a temporary condition. Joy means I can rejoice because I'm looking beyond the tribulation to what the tribulation is actually making me in God. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. When I was in the gym, I would lift weights when I was younger. And I would be in there, man, I'm talking about I would have leg things burning over I'm talking about. You get in there, man, you do them squat, get on that leg press machine, and you walk out, you feel like a, a, a <laughs> new farm. You, you can't hold the walk. Your, legs, your muscles so weak. You know it got like, right. Right. <laughs> you That's how you yeah, work man. out. You got to cut some of those limbs down. And you, you, I, then you get home, wife said, can you give me that bag of sugar off the top shelf? <laughs> <laughs> but the thing that's beautiful about it is that you wear a day or two after you have a good workout, you feel 
not so good. Mm -hmm. Your muscles are taut. You wander around and you feel strong. Yeah, yeah what you need? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Same thing with God. God has to send you through stuff to make those muscles, spiritually speaking, stronger. No resistance, you don't get better. Quick question. Yes. I forgot what it was. That's all right. I, I probably answered it. <laughs> Uh, I'm trying to hate on him. All right, let's keep reading quickly. He says, no, that word is the Greek word. You hear me use it all the time. Edu, E-I-D-O. Edu in the perfect tense. He says, we completely know that tribulation working, it makes what? Patience. Amen. It makes patience. Now, patience doesn't mean what we think it means. It doesn't mean uh, necessarily I can wait longer. It means it works with endurance. Who can want it? It pictures putting weight on somebody and you stand underneath the weight. So anytime you can stand underneath a problem and still be joyful, that's God making you strong. Amen. Some of the strongest Christians I've seen, and, I, and I'm not saying this just because of the class, are the ones that when I see them Sunday after Sunday, and I know there's a problem in their life. Mm -hmm. But they don't use that as an excuse not to come. Mm -hmm. they, don't, they don't get the mad at God. Oh, no, my, you got problems with the Lord? <laughs> but I got problems. Right? <laughs> they don't want to pity one. You know, they just let oh, God is good. But you just had somebody die in your family. Well, God is still good. Praise the Lord. But you just lost your job. Hallelujah. God knows you've been doing it. That's the kind of talk He wants to develop in us. Go, He slayed me. Yeah, well, I said. You think about a long time ago when you have, have these older saints, you have prayer service and they just put their hearts out and they testifying and they talking like you're talking now. But now we're getting so modern, we just, you know, you got some problems in your life, but you're trying to pretend like you all that in the back of chips. And, and your life is just falling up around you. Wow. I got emotions more because uh, some things I thought back on, things I could have done better, but I hold back mm -hmm. thinking that in life I can maybe approach the person a different way. That's not, just go, you can't, like one guy said at the meeting, you can't pick and choose who you take that gospel to. You just go there, either take it or reject it. But it's not yours to say, I'm not going here because they may not. And that's what the way I was struggling with. How do I approach? Just do it. And if they reject it, not, it's not you. But you just hate to see them throwing that gift away and not really understanding. And, and the world is just, just smothering us. Yeah, it's just saying. Falsehoods. I, I recall when I was a young child in the uh, first became a member of Lord's Church, how zealous I was compared to where I am now. Yeah. I mean, I was young, but I had more zeal mm -hmm. than I do now. And I didn't have as much knowledge mm -hmm. as I do now. Mm -hmm. I got knowledge, but not as much zeal. Where then, I had zeal, but not as much knowledge. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I wonder, is it is it better to be zealous with a little knowledge than be lazy with a whole lot of knowledge? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it's tough. It's tough. Let me move on. Let me move on. Look at verse number five. And hope. That word there, hope, it means an expectation of a future good. Make it not ashamed. In other words, he's saying when you believe in what God is going to do for you. You don't have to worry about what people talk about. That's you right. Amen. Around. That's right. I wouldn't just go back to this church and me. Hmm. I would, you know, when, when they had a tragedy in, in uh, South Carolina, Charleston, a few years ago, uh, I heard a lot of people talking, hey, you know, that's just a, you know, it's an evil world. They let them go to Burger King. You know what I mean? Killed nine members of that church. And, you know, that's why I don't leave the church. 
good God won't let nine people get shot in my church building. And it's just, see, that God is fake. That's, that's, that's the white God y'all worship. Now you want to be in a, and they give you all these reasons not to believe in God. Because their God makes everything right, <laughs> just the way they like it. Right? <laughs> right. Their God never gives them a problem. <laughs> but yet they, they're broken and, and, and mad. Your God is so good, why, why, why is he doing everything right for you? Huh. Right by you. You see what I'm saying? I'm spiritual. What has your spirituality done to you? Huh. You sound mighty bitter to me. You're more worried about me being a Christian than you being a good Christian. All right. And then they find the worst of, of quote unquote Christian uh, ethics. They find, I heard this pastor, he molested a three year old. And that's why I don't go to church. <laughs> You don't go to church because you don't want to go to church. Oh, <laughs> that pastor only live in your city. You know, like, oh, you know, no, no, I'm not going to church. You know, too many hypocrites. Look at this guy. Only, he can drive that million dollar car. That's why I don't, I don't trust you preachers. <laughs> <laughs> and you come by my house. Let me come by my house. <laughs> <laughs> you might change your mind. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we think about all kinds of reasons not to do what God wants us to do. All right. Make excuses. Hope doesn't make us ashamed because the love of God is shared abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. Verse number six. Here's, here's where uh, it gets good and good. He says, for while we were still helpless, underline that phrase, for while we were without strength, New Living Translation says, while we were or being utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for our sin. I want you to put by there Galatians 4.4. 4. Galatians 4.4. 4. What happened was, you and I were sinners, and, and the word work, is, to me, it's, it's not a good verb. It's actually mean. Word, word there is translated to the word O, O, N. And it means be. <clears throat> so when you see the word work in the next few, the next few passages here, He's really saying you were in a state of being a sinner. Not like it's past sinner, you stop sinning. Mm -hmm. He says you are still a sinner. Being helpless in that state. In other words, there's nothing that you can do being a sinner to merit God's blessing. So whatever happens has to be passive, meaning that it has to be something that's acted upon me. And I have no uh, power to enact it myself. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let, let, let me go ahead and read. For when we were yet uh, without strength, in due time Christ died, watch this, for the ungodly. Mm -hmm. God's love to the sinner is independent of the work of Christ. Is, is, uh, is independent of the work of Christ. He loved us so much that he gave his one and only son to reconcile our salvation. When he says helpless, he means without strength. He says, but at the right time, at the opportune time, Christ died for us. I want you to write these passages as examples. Matthew chapter 26, verse 45. Um, Matthew 26, 45. We want to get into some of these passages. We really want to get. That's why I say this, this lesson is really a two-part. It's not really, I don't do it just as rushing through it, but Matthew 26, 45. John 8, 20. John 8, 20. John 8, 20. John 8, 20. And John 12, 27. 